Hi. In this video, we're going to be using the polygon lasso tool and the regular lasso tool to create this plank of wood. And we're going to start off uh, using Adobe Photoshop to create the whole thing. Let's go ahead and open up a 4,000 pixel by 4,000 pixel canvas. So if you hit Control N or Command N on a Mac and type in 4,000 by 4,000 by 600 pixels per inch, we'll get a blank canvas. I work at a high resolution so that um, if I need to move this asset to another file, it's easy to do so. Uh, we're going to make a brand new layer. We can make a layer by going to the Layers panel and click on the New Layer icon. The keyboard shortcut for that is uh, Shift Command N on the Mac. And we'll start out by using the Polygon Lasso tool. The Polygon Lasso tool is going to be located on the tool uh, box that's on the left hand side. And I have the Lasso tool and the Poly Lasso tool active. I've actually hidden the Magnetic Lasso tool. So I'm going to use the Polygon Lasso tool because it makes angular lines. So I'll start off by making a rectangular shape like this. It's making a rectangular selection and I'm going to fill that rectangular selection with a color. So I'll pick kind of a medium brown value for my swatches palette and to fill that color into the selection I will use Option Delete. And Option Delete is a quick keyboard shortcut to fill in a color. On the PC, it's Alt Backspace. Since I'm working off of a Mac, I'm going to be using Mac keyboard shortcuts, but everywhere I'm using Command, PC users can use Control. Every time I'm using Option, PC users can use Alt. So I've just filled this color in. And if I want to dial that specific color to a say darker shade of uh, brown, I can hit Command U, which brings up the hue saturation slider, and I can adjust its lightness, or its saturation, or its color. So I'm going to make a couple of quick adjustments there. I've just changed the hue uh, to make the wood look a little bit brown. And the colors themselves aren't so important in terms of the values. Um, the focus is on the technique. I'll click OK and I'll deselect. To deselect an object in Photoshop, you want to hit Command D. So I've got the wood plank layer set up. I need to show that this wood plank has some thickness, so I'll make a new layer underneath my existing layer. And I'm always working on a transparent layer. I'm not working on the background layer because it will include the white background. If I hold down Shift Command N, I will get a dialog box that shows up. I can just hit OK, hit Enter, and I'm going to use the Polygon Lasso tool once again. And This time I'm going to um, make a shape that looks somewhat like a triangle. I'm basically uh, making a selection on a layer that's underneath my existing selection. And We can use a darker brown. I'll select that from the Swatches panel, and I'll hit Option Delete. And I want to make that a little bit darker. So I can bring up hue and saturation to bring it a little bit darker. And I can hit com Command D. So I'm using Command U to bring up the hue saturation. And I'm using Command D to deselect. I want to isolate the piece on the left and make it darker. So on the layer that contains the dark brown, I'll just make a polygon lasso tool selection around that particular shape. I can hit Command J. It jumps the selection onto its own layer. And then Command U, and I'll make it a little bit darker. So you can see now that the plank has some thickness associated with it. It makes it look like a wooden plank. We're using pretty much solid colors here to start out with. Now I want to switch to the regular lasso tool. And if I want to switch between those two tools, the keyboard shortcut is Shift L. And when I digitally paint, I typically use Shift L to switch between the two. Now, this is only one method of painting. It's 
maybe not traditional painting, but this is just the way that I quickly uh, paint, and it gives things more of a stylized, cartoony look as opposed to something that's super realistic. And we'll talk about the differences between both and some techniques for painting realistically, but this is meant to kind of get people, um, you know, acclimated to digital painting without the scary factor of which brush do I use. So I'm using the freeform lasso tool and I'm just going to hold down my shift key and I'll just gently glide my hand across and you can see that on my screen here it's actually making multiple linear selections here and I can add like maybe a knot so I'm essentially drawing lines or drawing selections with the freeform lasso tool and I'm on the layer that contains the top part of the plank. If I hit Command J, it puts, it, puts that object onto a separate layer, and Command U, I can make it darker. So right away you can see that the wood plank is starting to look like wood. Now that we have that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to make a small notch in the wood to make it look like it's been cut. Um, I'm going to uh, take the wood layer, so I'll go back to the base wood layer, I'll use my polygon lasso tool, and I'll just simply make a little cut. So I'll make a selection, I'll hit Command X, Command X cut from the base wood, and now I need to fill it with some thickness. I'm going to move to a layer uh, that's underneath. Uh, my wood layer. I'll make a brand new layer. I'll hit Shift Command N and with the Polygon Lasso tool I'll make another selection that's triangular and I'll fill it in with the same value of brown that I have on the base here. So I'll hit Command I to sample that and then Option Delete. And so now this plank has some thickness and it has a little bit of character but we're not done yet. What I want to do now is to add some tonal value changes between the wood. So if we're assuming that light is hitting the top of the wood, maybe it's kind of uh, creating a little bit of decay on the left and right hand side. I'll make a new layer above all of the existing layers that I currently have. And I'm going to set this layer to multiply. And when I paint, dark values, I tend to generally use multiply, and you'll see what I mean here in a second. Let's, before we start painting, I want to go ahead and make sure that I'm painting only on the area that contains the wooden plank top. I can confirm that by hitting the command key on the thumbnail for that base layer. And what that will do is it will select the, the top of that wooden plank. Now that I have that selected on this, on this new layer that I've created, I can come in with a big giant brush. And the brush that I'm using is actually built into Photoshop. It's the soft round brush. I have a lot of brushes here. Um, but if you look at the general brushes and if you go down to soft round pressure opacity, I've just set that brush to a very large value, about 1300 pixels. And with that, I'll come in and I'll just gently paint on both the left and right hand side. And that makes the center appear to be a little bit lighter than the edges. And that just gives it a little bit more variation. I can paint some highlights and I'll do that by hitting Shift Control N or Shift Command N. And I'll set this new layer that's above my multiply layer. I'll set it to screen and I'll pick a saturated version of orange and I'll just paint gently somewhere in the middle. So what this will do is it makes that you know solid shape look a little bit more complex. Now we have a variation from light to dark and I can hit Control D or Command D to deselect and I have my plank of wood. Last thing I need to do is that small triangular piece. It needs a little bit more contrast so I'll hit Control U or Command U and make it just a little bit darker so that we can see it. So we've used a few keyboard shortcuts here. We've used uh, Control J or Command J that jumps or duplicates a layer or duplicates a selection the way we've used it. 
Um, we've also used Command U or Control U, and that lets us bring up the hue saturation slider. And both of those are really powerful keyboard shortcuts. Normally when I paint, I generally do not go to the swatch panel a whole heck of a lot. I just usually do it very, um, you know, do it through the uh, hue and saturation. So um, I hope this video was informative. Let me go ahead and just group these together. I do want to show you one more trick. I'll hit Control G to group everything together. And if I make a duplicate of this layer, let's just call this wood. I'm labeling the layer group as wood. I'll hit Command J, and that makes a copy of that group folder. I wanted to show you that there are some cool things that you can actually do once you have this piece of wood drawn. If I hit Command T, and if I choose, um, let's see, um, I'll choose Distort. I can make the shape look a little bit more irregular. I can also use Perspective or Skew uh, to control the shape of the wood. If I were to merge all of those layers on that copy that I've just created, I can apply Warp by right-clicking and choosing Warp, and I can control the shape of that wood to make it more curved, and maybe if I'm trying to create a thatched roof or create the siding of a home, um, I can make it warp as well. So I hope you found this video to be useful. Let me know. This is my first YouTube video on this new channel, and um, I want to find out what you think about this technique. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll speak with you soon.